everyone. In this video, I'm going to be walking through Activity 5-5, titled Configuring Direct Access. This is from the MCSA slash MCSE Guide to Microsoft Windows Server 2012 Administration in preparation of Exam 70-411. Um, this activity is partnered with Activity 5-6, which is testing direct access once it's been configured. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a machine capable of testing this. So this video is only going to be the configuration steps. Um, if you are following along and you want to be able to test it, you'll need an enterprise version of like Windows 8. Um, and unfortunately, I only have a professional version um, and rather than the enterprise, so I won't be able to test my configuration. In any case, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing we need to do is set up a security group that will control access via direct access through our servers and into our network. Um, so to begin, we need to be on our domain controller. Um, we'll open Active Directory Users and Computers, and we need to make a computer group. We can either do that under Users and create a group here, or we can do it under Groups and create a group here. Um, based on the book, I'm going to go ahead and do it in the users OU. I'm going to create a new group. And it needs to be a global security group, which it's set up to be by default. I will just name it DA Computers for direct access computers. And then if you have a Windows 8 machine, um, Windows 8 Enterprise, you will want to add that machine into this group. Um, since mine's only a professional, this the steps will be the same, but I won't be able to test, unfortunately. Um, so if you're using Enterprise, go ahead and do that. And then we'll work on actually configuring direct access. So this is going to be on our second server, our remote access server. Um, so this server needs to have if you're following the book, two um, interfaces, network interfaces, one that's on the domain network, directly connected to the domain network, and the other should be connected to the internet directly. Or your router will need to have NAT set up to this interface, depending on how you're doing that. And then we want to open the remote access management console from your server manager, it's under your tools. So to get started, we're just going to run the wizard. Direct access and VPN haven't been configured, so we'll select this wizard to begin it using mostly default settings. Um, you can set this up to include VPN. I'm going to set it up only as direct access. Okay, so it ran through the prerequisites, and now we're looking at the network topology. Um, and here's where I said that it has two network interfaces. It's acting as an edge device. Um, you can have it behind your router. Acting behind your router is the edge device. Um, and it'll have two network adapters. And then your third option is behind an edge device with a single network adapter. And that's a little bit trickier, but really the wizard can kind of walk you through pretty much everything. Um, so for this, I'm using it as an edge device. And I need to put in the uh, IPv4 address. So I guess we can take a quick look at that. And this should be for the public address. So I've got 203.1.13.2. I believe if you're following the book, it's .1. Um, because I'm using VMware, my physical machine has reserved dot one for itself to communicate with these virtual machines so this machine is actually dot two if you're not using VMware and you're using physical hardware your static address might be dot one here all right next we're gonna go ahead it has this link for click here to edit the wizard settings we're gonna take a quick look and see if there's anything we need to modify I'll try to make that a little bit bigger here on the screen. 
Okay, so we're going to leave the GPO settings as they are. Um, the remote clients is what we're going to want to change. So we're going to remove all domain computers and we're going to add in that group that we created. So that way, later on down the road, if we want to add another machine to be able to use direct access into our network, we just have to add that machine to this group. And I'm going to go ahead and disable for mobile computers only. So it'll be anything, any computer that can connect. The Network Connectivity Assistant um, on your Windows 8 machines, this is a service that will run in the background. Um, so when you are establishing the connection from your client, um, you'll want to use a PowerShell command. And so I'm going to go ahead and quickly walk through the steps for that as though I was on the client computer. So you can open command prompt on your Windows 8 machine and type PowerShell. That will open a PowerShell console inside of your window. And you'll want to use this command to get direct access connection status and hit enter. Um, it should, depending on how your machine is set up, if it's connected to the domain network, it'll show that you're connected locally. Um, once you disconnect from the domain network and you're connected from the internet, then you will need to assign an address, of course, to the Windows 8 machine, and then run the same um, command, the get DA connection status, and it'll show that you're connected remotely to that network rather than locally. <coughs> um, once you're on the internet side and the direct access connection is established, you'll want to ping your remote access server, which in this case is server 2, and you'll be getting most likely I think it's IPv6 addresses back or IPv6 replies. So that's how you'll be testing it if you are testing on a Windows 8 Enterprise machine. Um, in the event that you run that command and it tells you that the network connectivity assistant isn't running on your Windows 8 machine that's just a service. And you can find it right there. So you can see that on the server, it's manually triggered. Um, it's on your Windows 8 machine and your remote connection server. You might just want to come in here and start it. And maybe adjust the properties to automatic delayed. That way, it can run so you can view the information from that command in PowerShell. I'm not going to worry about tweaking any of the settings there. We'll go ahead and finish that. We have the remote access server. If you have a different access server than what you initially thought, so if this IP address was wrong, we can come in and change it to point to the correct machine. And then our infrastructure servers should be a domain DNS IPv6 address. Okay. So we'll go ahead and finish that. Um, it'll go through the full configuration. Um, this might take a couple of minutes. It does set up the GPO, the group policy objects, and creates the self-signed certificate to work between the server, the remote access server, and the client. In case you have this configured and you're working on your client machine, that command again was get direct access connection status. Alright, so we see that it was applied successfully. Um, that's pretty much everything. You can go through and look at the specific sections. and see the configuration that's been set up with most of the default settings. Um, yeah.
And here in step two for a remote access server, you can change the IP address. So if you need to move machines around and change your addressing, you can do that. Um, but you cannot change the topology of the server without um, deactivating this and reconfiguring it from the beginning. So that's something to keep in mind, is that you can come in and, and change your IP addressing to match your network if it changes. So in step three, we have the infrastructure setup, the infrastructure windows, or sorry, infrastructure servers that we can come in and edit. Um, and then here, we can change the certificate for the NLS server or the NLS deployment from the direct access server to a remote web server. Um, for a simple network like I have built, I don't really need to worry about changing anything in there. Alright, so we're going to come take a quick look at the dashboard. And we have that the configuration was set up and distributed successfully. Um, nothing cl currently connected, but this does allow you to monitor if people are connecting remotely through direct access to your network. And then we'll go ahead and take a look at the operation status. And I'm getting a warning that it's not working properly. I have no way of testing it. So unfortunately I can't really troubleshoot or verify that. I believe it's because my network interfaces don't actually have internet connectivity. Um, in a real environment, you would have internet connectivity, which is kind of required for remote access from a client at home or in a different branch, whatever the case may be for your network. Um, so chances are, if, as long as you're connected to the internet, you won't be getting that warning. And we should be able to... refresh it, let it get the operating status, and we see two critical notifications. So here it shows that it's critical that it's not working, and it's because of URL availability, because I'm not actually on the internet. So there's no internet connectivity, and that's why I'm getting that error. Um, for direct access, any error will show as a critical direct access error. So if I resolve that by getting it onto the internet, it should resolve everything. Um, if you have other errors here, you can usually scroll down and it'll kind of explain what the error is, possible causes, and some troubleshooting steps. And I think that's pretty much everything for Activity 5.5. Activity 5.6, which is the testing, is just make sure this is available on the internet. In this case, I have Network 2 is acting as a pseudo-internet. And I would connect a Windows 8 Enterprise machine to that network, to this network, which is the 203.0.113.0 slash 24 network, and test the connection that way. Um, I think that's pretty much everything. So, as always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them for me below, and hopefully I'll see you in my next video.